We're back and we have another Stray Thoughts video. Stray Thoughts. We've been watching a lot of Eurovision, probably more than is healthy for an American. I guess you Europeans have a natural immunity to it. But Americans are like, oh no, the Eurovision vaccine, it's bad for us. But in all seriousness, we are in a position to track trends from year to year as we record these videos and commentaries on Eurovision. And this year, something we've been tracking for a while has really come to a head. It seems like hipster fashion and indie music styles have permeated Eurovision a lot more deeply than in previous years. You see this mostly in the female singers, and the manifestation of the trend is their adoption of post-Lord synth-pop styles and musical genres. You can see it in Azerbaijan's Sarma. She has Lord's synth drums and hairstyle. You can see it in Bulgaria's Polly Genova and her side shave haircut. And you can see it in Italy with Francesca Michelin's Lana Del Rey-esque sadcore ballad and her music video, which is a sort of Michelle Gondry light. But the guys don't want to be left out. They got hipster fashion all their own. You've got Nika Kocharov and Young George and Lolita's 90s style grungy noise rock. You got the Mad Men meets Bacharach retro smooth stylings of Estonia's Yuri Putzman. And there are even a couple of alt country leaning hoedowns. One from the Netherlands, which plays like old Wilco, and another from France, whose Amir bears more resemblance to one of Mumford's sons than we are entirely comfortable with. Truth be told, we have mixed feelings about this. One of the things that we as Americans and exporters of a hegemonic culture love about Eurovision is the diversity. Though I suppose, come to think of it, outlandish flamboyance is its own kind of homogeneity, at least a, a homogeneity of tone and energy level. Let's not forget that in 2012, though the winner was a straight down the middle pop song, Euphoria, and, and that's not a knock on it. I love Euphoria. Euphoria! Even so, a particular highlight from that year were the Russian grannies and their onstage cooking demo. So, paradoxically, the predominance of indie mainstream musical styles and urban outfitters-esque fashion styles strips away, at least for us, some of the characteristic weirdness and diversity that makes Eurovision wonderful. On the other hand, for a while we have been a fan of something that we call the syncretic transnational hipsterati, a global youth culture that shares and reappropriates and remixes and reinvents uh, fashions, trends, musical styles, and so on. Overall, it's probably true that this development has a generally positive effect on the average quality level of the music. Though that's kind of like saying that when Starbucks comes to your town, the average quality level of a cup of coffee goes up. Yeah, it's true, but at what cost? Uh, about $5 in Los Angeles. We could see the apotheosis of this trend in coming years, with various indie mainstream stars representing the countries in Eurovision. Let's see, we've probably got MIA for the UK, obviously Bjork for Iceland, and hey, if Australia's still hanging around, they can send Courtney Barnett. That would be great. We're very excited, not just for this year's show, but to track these trends in years to come. Subscribe to this channel and don't miss any overthinking Eurovision. Never, lot ever, ah, ah, ah. <laughs>